Does it ever seem like you can't keep your sea perch still in the water while you take your measurements? Either you're rising or falling, trying to maintain elevation while you, while you use your vertical motor. Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Sea Perch Buoyancy Engine, and you can make it yourself out of cheap, inexpensive materials that you can find at the local chemistry supply store. You can take your measurements at a level elevation, and it won't break the bank. The engine operates by a principle known as buoyancy, which was discovered by Archimedes sometimes during the 12th century AD. He was a really smart guy. Archimedes found out that an object weighs much less under the water than it does out of the water. This is because the water will create a buoyant force on the object. Archimedes found that this buoyant force was exactly equal to the weight of the water which is displaced by the submerged object, in this case an orange. Basically, the water wants to fill in the hole which was created by the object and tries to push it up out of the way. So using Archimedes' principle, we can use the different measurements, one in and out of the water, to figure out the volume of the orange. Archimedes used this in a very famous story where a certain king asked him to figure out if his golden crown was entirely made of gold. Archimedes weighed the crown in the water and also out of the water, and he knew the crown wasn't entirely gold since the numbers didn't quite work out correctly. So you might be saying, well that's all well and good. But how does this help me with my sea perch? Well, what we're going to do is use a fluid lighter than water. So when we push it into the sea perch, the sea perch will float like this. Here's the buoyancy engine using cooking oil as the driving fluid. It's similar to hydraulics in this fact that as I pull the syringe on the one side, you can see it this one suck in. And if I drive fluid into it, then it will move out. We can use this to make the sea perch go up and down and even float at different levels in the water by how much fluid we put into it. More fluid will make it float higher, less fluid will make it sink. All right, now that we know how it works, it's time to build it. So let's figure out what we need. So to build the engine, we need three syringes. Most likely 60 milliliter syringes are the best since they're big enough, but any bigger ones will probably be better. We'll need a ball valve. This is a quarter inch ball valve. This is the on position. And then this is the off position. So fluid will not be able to flow like that. And it will be able to flow in like that. We'll need a T-junction to uh, combine the three together. And one long tube of quarter inch tubing. And little small sections of quarter inch tubing to connect the different parts together. It's time to put it together. First we get our T-junction. And we hook the ball out the T-junction. Like that. Then we connect one of the syringes to the end of the ball out and the other syringe to the end of the T. Yes. Now we connect the long tube the other side of the T-junction, like so, so we have all three. And the final syringe is attached to the end of the long tube. So just to show you exactly what it's like, I'm going to take you on a tour. First you have the 60 milliliter syringe, which goes into the ball valve, which goes into the T-junction. We follow this T-junction, we have a short tube to the other syringe. So these two together, are the control of our part. Now if we continue along this long tube, we have the bottom syringe down here at the bottom. So here's the total, here's the total engine. This is what it looks like. Alright, so here's how we fill it with oil. We remove one of the stoppers and pour oil into the syringe. You'll see as it fills up, you don't have to take some time, and it will slowly decrease, it will slowly lower down the volume. If you want to speed things up, take the other side and suck air out of this other syringe. Make sure that your ball valve is in the on position as you go. If it's in the opposition, it will not be able to fill. Release 
release all the stoppers before you go. Now that I have oil in the cylinders, I'd like to try and get as much air out as possible. So I'm going to remove one of the syringes, even though there's air in this one. I'm going to compress this cylinder down to raise the level of the oil near the top Right up at the top, just the stopper right on the top there. Push it down. Close to the top. Put the stopper in. And finally, do the same thing with this. Remove its syringe. So now, finally, our last syringe. We'll put oil in. And there we go. This last one's more difficult than the others because it doesn't compress at all. got ourselves a hydraulic system between these three syringes. Here's how we check and see if it's working. We'll first push oil into the one cylinder and see if it comes out. And then we'll pull it out and make sure it's working. While it's underwater, this cylinder will be able to, the water pressure will push it in a little bit harder. So we won't have to worry about that quite as much. So the very last bit is okay that it doesn't compress all the way. So this system looks like it's working. So here's what it looks like in action. Here you go.